Hi everyone, welcome to Unique Whimsy. Today we are prettying up some bags. Um, I want to make them look vintagey. So, and we have a couple more projects and we'll see how far we get. Okay, so the first one is we're gonna embellish these bags here. And I do believe I got these at the dollar store. I'm taking some gesso that I've had for far too long. I need to be using my mixed media more. So before everything gets dried up and won't be able to use it anymore. It's the thing about art supplies, they don't last forever, especially the mixed media. Um, so it's going on kind of thick that is okay because once we put this gesso down we're gonna go ahead let it dry and then um, or use the heat tool and then do some inking so yeah you're only gonna faintly see the design um, in the background and while we have the gesso out we'll start a second project so that this can dry all the way I will throw it up here and then do another one so I like to do multiples of the projects pretty much everything I do because then I can have something for to put in my idea book so I don't forget different techniques that I've tried, but I can also um, put it in the same book multiple times so that um, there's some continuity. It just depends, but I do like to make multiples. Um, sometimes I, do, I like to look back like, oh, that's the one I made for my friend so-and-so and then I can see what I did and of course you know your style improves and changes with time so it's really good to be able to look back and remember so I don't want to cover up every single bit you know I just want to mostly so that when I um, ink and do my stamping it will take it. So the next project that I'm working on are these pieces of um, chipboard die cuts of uh, a Tim Holtz die of the dress form. Let's get this in frame. Okay. That. And once again, I don't need to cover up every single bit. I can just get a rough um, bit of coverage and I'm thinking actually now that I'm doing this that I would like the bottom to stay brown but I'm going to do them all the same way and yeah. usually have several projects going on at once so it's really good to do an assembly line on different projects and what's nice about the gesso you could use white paint too just a little bit thicker the gesso is um, is that you don't have to be perfect with it so I'm gonna throw oops I'm gonna throw these up here to dry as well and then we have more die cuts to do this is also a Tim Holtz die of uh, I think it's called sewing room and I just used a cereal box, but it's one of the um, the mega cereal boxes, so it's really thick. I think it came with like two bags in it. And if you see this down here, I don't know if I explained it or not, but it is um, it comes from a roll of contact paper, and I'm pretty messy with my mixed media. You can see my hands, <laughs> and I prefer. To use my 
my mat for just for inking and so I like to have one I don't mind getting paint on. And it's nice that I really have to get some more water in this gesso. You get to the bottom and it starts getting pretty gummy. But I just recently uh, bought some canvases, like a lot of them, from a neighbor whose daughter used them in her art classes, but they're not like finished pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and paint over them. And in order to do so, I will use the gesso. So, you know what art school's like. <laughs> The teacher tells you what to do and you have to do it, so it's not always what you come up with. It's not always what you want to hang in your house or what you're proud of because you're still working on your technique. So I love that. And then what I'm going to do is, um, when these dry, is ink all the way around and then wrap some thread on the spool. But for now, we are going to set these up to dry. And these will be, or one of them at least, will be going into the Flowist Journal for Jamie. And then, um, yeah, we'll see about the other ones. Um, okay. The next project that I have is, I actually want to use this um, gesso I have on here. So I think I'll just kind of messily spread it across this sheet. We're going to be putting layers on it, so it doesn't matter that it's messy. And that's the thing that I love about mixed media is, you know, you can really throw the paint on the canvas or whatever you're using, um, the paper, and not worry too much about how it looks because you're going to continue to work on it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to let that dry. Maybe I'll clean my brush off on here like that. Okay. And then, um, and see, we got a bunch of paint on here, but because this is, uh, or gesso, um, because this is a flowish journal, it's okay because we want, we basically want paint everywhere. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be doing different techniques, just not just painting, but it's, it's okay if things are a little bit messy. Actually, we're going for that. So, I made this cute little swan and... Yeah, everybody does things a little bit differently, but with flowish journals or just crafting in general, I kind of just like to go with the flow. Oh, funny flow. <laughs> uh, and just follow my intuition about uh, how to decorate and not be too worried about how everything's going to turn out. It's going to turn out beautifully if you're allowing yourself to just go for it. So I'm going to wait for these two to dry and then I can come back and do some inking and stamping. We're running out of space up here. Okay, the next project I want to do is, this is also for the Flowish Journal. I mean, my videos um, for a while are going to be for the Flowish Journal. So I want to share a bit of washi with her and this is one I made last night and it's not like sharing in the way where she'd peel it off it's more of like um, a cute base to start an embellishment and I want to make some more of these for her um, hoping to use different tapes <laughs> but maybe they'll coordinate so I can see about the size that they are, and I'm using this music, um, the sheet music that doesn't have a ton of um, 
notes on it, so it's great for this. Okay. And I think we'll make a couple of these all at the same time. My hands are kind of um, covered in gesso and it just it doesn't want to come off. It's okay. So make that. I'll make one down here as well. Uh, I don't know if you know, but I love washi. I know I'm not alone in this. When I first um, got when I got my first roll, I remember watching a video. And there is somebody. Gosh, I can't remember her name now. But she had like 700 rolls of washi, and I was like, wow. That's a dream. And now I probably have that amount. <laughs> I don't know. I've never, well, I have counted, and I think when I did count, it was a couple hundred at the time. But you know how it is. When you like something, you're looking for it, and somebody says, What do you want for your birthday? And you're like, Washi tape. <laughs> never bought one in a D stash. I think that would be kind of fun, but I'd be worried that they uh, would be the kind like this one. This one's sticky on both sides for some reason, but it works fine. Um, sometimes washi gets attached to itself. I've had a couple rolls like that. I think, uh, I'm trying to remember the brand of it. Got them from Tuesday morning and they, yeah, they were stuck to it. And so, got these happy looking washi tapes. And then here is my big punch. Let me just put it through here like that. And I think I need one more row. And that's what's cool about these punches that you can turn it around and see what's going on. It's because Otherwise, it would be hard to punch it out in the way where you get exactly what you want. Oh, I have some mushrooms. These are so cute. That is one kind of washi I really want to get more of is mushrooms. And then I think we'll have some cactuses. It's really, really hot here. Um, and I think it's not super great for my washi, <laughs> so I need to move. <laughs> I need to move because my washi does not like the heat. I want to make my own washi. I did that once, but I used it all up. And so I want to do that again because that's really fun. And make it just the colors or designs that you want. Um, okay, hopefully that's enough. I think this one kind of needs one more row. It's cute, it's polka dots. And I'm not worried too much about color coordination because we're doing fun and random. And I like randomness. And so if you have sheet music like this where there is a lot of spaces, you can just go ahead and um, use it this way. So you get it through that window. And sometimes the tape does that, but you can just press it back down. Isn't that cute? And I can put it all on the same page. I think I'm going to um, make a second video because this one's already getting kind of long, showing you what I do with the gesso pieces I just made. Okay, I'll be right back. Part two.
Thanks for watching.